Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Rosemary and in today's video, I have episode five of my Dollar Dupes of High-End Retailers series featuring Olive Atelier, whose gorgeous rustic decor pieces are perfect for fall decorating. This is actually part two of the Olive Atelier episode. In part one, I focused on presenting a detailed dollar replica of a traditional Turkish olive jar with a drip finish and glazed top. I'll provide a link in the description if you haven't seen it and would like to check it out. But as promised in this week's video, I will be duping a paper mache gourd, an aged wood candle holder, and an aged wood riser. Let's start with the paper mache gourd. This is a pretty ivory colored piece whose interesting shape and texturized surface works well as a decorative object. Several years ago, when I was duping Restoration Hardware's paper mache bowl, I came up with a fab tax method of doing paper mache. Instead of going through the whole traditional process of making a paper mache paste and then using a grease bowl as a mold, I figured why not simply just keep the bowl in place and just glue the paper directly to it. Made sense to me, especially since I was using a Dollar Tree bowl and it did make the whole process so much easier. So I'm going to employ the same method for the Olive Atelier Gourd. To make the gourd shape, I glued three pieces together. This is the lid from a Dollar Tree spackle container, but you can use any lid that fits. I also used one of the globe vases from the floral section and one of the dessert glasses that come in a pack of three from the kitchen section. I glued the three pieces together with E6000 and then set them aside until the glue was completely set. I like to be extra sure, so I typically let the glue set up overnight. And then here's what the shape looks like once it's all together. And as always, I wash the surface and wipe with vinegar to ensure all oils and residues are gone. For the paper mache, I took Dollar Tree toilet paper and separated the plies. Then placed the squares on top of each other and removed the edges so as not to get any sharp lines once the sheets are applied. Next, I took some Elmer's glue and diluted it with water to get a thinned consistency. The idea is to have enough water so that the paper breaks down, but also enough glue so that it sticks to the surface of the glass. From there, I pat the paper pieces into the glue, then gently dab the surface with more of the glue mixture. I found it easier to hold the neck of the gourd while I did the globe base. And once the base was covered in that first layer of paper, I placed it on a small terracotta pot so that the bottom would not stick to my work surface and then applied the glue and layered the paper onto the neck of the gourd. Once the entire gourd was covered in that first layer of paper, I began applying a second layer of paper to the still wet surface, again covering the entire gourd with the pieces of paper. To make the lip around the top of the gourd, I took a strip of toilet paper and rolled it up, then applied some glue mix to the top and pressed the rolled paper into it, applying some more glue mix to further shape and secure the ring. But then at this juncture, I really wasn't happy with the texture. The thin crepey finish was a good match for the finish on the Restoration Hardware Bowl, but in taking another look at the Olive Atelier paper mache pieces, they tend to be more of a plump pulpy finish. So I decided to plump things up a bit by doing the same process, but this time using pieces of paper towel. I again separated the plies, but since this is a thicker paper, I worked with smaller pieces to ensure proper adhesion as well as breakdown of the fibers. I applied the pieces in the same way, adding a little glue mix to the surface, then patting a piece of the paper towel on top and adding more glue mix on top of that. And then once all of the paper towel pieces were applied, I set the piece aside to dry. Once dry, I painted the gourd with a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And then once that was dry, I diluted some ivory chalk paint with a little water and then sponged that on sporadically, dabbing with wet paper towel to blend. The two paint colors are very similar, but even just that subtle difference lends some dimension to the finish. But then that fresh paint seemed a little too shiny and new. So to give it more of an aged vintage finish, I decided to give it a tea stain by dabbing the surface with tea and using the tea bag as an applicator, then blending with my fingers to make the perfect finish for this vintage paper mache gourd. And then here you go, a pretty little paper mache style gourd, perfect as it is on a shelf or table, or add a few stems to add a little color or seasonal flair. For the next project, I'd like to create these chunky wood candle holders. These pieces come in various shapes and sizes and have a rustic aged wood look with a bleached, almost petrified wood finish and a rusted metal plate on the inside to hold the candle. To construct this dupe version, I'll be hitting the recycle bin to pick up a pet food can, a jar lid, 
and an empty Dollar Tree spackle container. I glued the container to the can and then the lid went inside to create the metal plate for the candle to sit on. Since I wanted to bond metal and plastic, I used E6000 and then set aside for the glue to fully set up. To create the aged wood look surface, I placed some caulk in a container along with a little Waverly chalk paint in the color sandstone. I like to use the Dollar Tree caulk since it's inexpensive and easy to use, but I ran out so I ended up using this other caulk I had on hand. I mixed the paint and caulk together, then spread it on the container and can combo with a craft stick, kind of like icing a cake. Once I had covered the surface, I smoothed the caulk using water-dipped fingers. As long as your fingers remain wet, the caulk will be pretty workable. Once I had the surface pretty smooth, I further formed it into the shape of the candle holder, making more of an indent around where the can and the container meet and relocating some of that caulk to fill in any spots and further smooth out around the container top. Once I had the surface and shape where I want it, I set it aside for the caulk to dry a bit. After about a half hour, it was ready for the next step. I used an old gift card to make lines in the caulk. If the caulk doesn't indent, then it's still too wet. So give it a little more time to set up. Then once I was able to go around the entire piece, making these lines reminiscent of cracks you would find in aged wood, I set the piece aside to completely dry overnight. To create the metal insert, I took a jar lid that fit inside the container and painted the bottom with aged copper craft paint. And while the paint was still wet, I sprinkled on some cinnamon. The next day, once the caulk was completely dry, it was time to do the accent painting. To do so, I used some chalk paint in the color mineral and diluted that with water. Next, I dipped the tip of a foam brush into the diluted paint and applied it to the lines that I made with the card. Once multiple lines were made, I went back with a damp paper towel and gently blotted the lines and then gently blotted the paint into the surface around the lines. I then added more of the diluted paint to the brush and gently worked more of the mineral color into the surface of the candle holder. Next, I took a little chalk paint in the color hazelnut and again diluted that with a little water. I then mixed that into the diluted mineral color paint to get a blend of the two colors. Then dab that onto the surface, again blending with a wet paper towel to create subtle shadows so that all three colors, the original sandstone, the mineral, and now the hazelnut worked together to create an almost petrified wood look. Once the accent paint was dry, it was time to add the metal insert. So I placed the lid into the container and then mixed up a little more of that caulk paint with the caulk and the sandstone color paint, then painted that onto the rim of the lid, sealing it into place. Then once that caulk paint is dry, I'll go back and touch up the metal area of the plate. And then here you can see after I did touch up that copper and also redid the cinnamon and now I'm painting on some Mod Podge to seal in that cinnamon and paint. And now here is another look at the originals and then here is the dollar dupe. I just love how chunky and rustic these are and the neutral shade makes them a great year round option but the rusticness makes them particularly nice for fall. For the next project I wanted to recreate the very popular aged wood riser. These pieces also come in different shapes and sizes and with variations in color and markings making each piece unique. To make a dollar dupe version, I picked up two $3 wood rounds from the dollar plus section and then removed the metal hangers from the back. Next, using wood glue, I glued the two pieces back to back and then secured with clamps to make sure the pieces were tightly held. I also glued together four sets of Dollar Tree Jenga blocks and then set all the pieces aside for the glue to fully dry. Once ready, I began distressing the surface of the wood. I took a screwdriver and first made several deep lines in the wood. I went over the lines multiple times to deepen. These deeper lines are going to mimic the cracks that occur naturally over time in aged and weathered wood. In addition to these deep lines, I also made multiple more shallow lines. These shallow lines are going to mimic more of a natural wood grain. Next, I wanted to flatten and distress the beveled edge of the Dollar Tree wood round. So I again used the screwdriver to flatten and scrape up the beveling. Lastly, I wanted to create more of an uneven surface to the top. So I again took the screwdriver and this time I used the whole tip instead of just that pointy edge to scrape up the top of the wood. Once I was happy with the markings, I took some sandpaper and sanded the surface to remove any jagged pieces, folding the paper to get into those deeper lines. I then took a toothbrush to brush the sawdust from the surface and the cracks. 
Next, I used the sawdust to make some homemade wood putty by mixing it with wood glue. I then used the putty to fill in the gaps between the two rounds to make one cohesive piece. The little pieces of wood scraps in the putty also add to the distressed surface. After the putty was applied, I used wood glue to attach the sets of Jenga blocks to the bottom of the riser. For the accent paint, I started by creating a stain by diluting some of the mineral colored chalk paint with water and then brushed it onto the surface of the wood, making sure to get into cracks along the sides and on the feet. For the next paint color, I used sandstone and again diluted it with water, then applied it to the surface in swatches, then went back with a damp paper towel to blend it into the mineral color. The next color I used was hazelnut which I also diluted with water and also mix in some of that mineral to grade down the color a bit. I then added the hazelnut mix to the riser, concentrating it around the edges and sides with a few splotches in the middle. Then again, blot it and blend it with the wet paper towel. I really wanted to accentuate the deep creases. So using a thin paintbrush, I painted them with truffle color paint. Then I used the damp paper towel to blend the paint that got onto the surface. For the shallow lines, I again used the truffle colored paint, but this time I diluted it with water and then dabbed it on along the shallow lines, wiping and blending with the damp towel. To create the dark spots around the edge, I mixed some black chalk paint with the truffle paint and then used a dry brush to paint it onto the raised surfaces created by the wood shavings that were in the putty. And then again used a wet towel to blend and soften the lines. And then here is the finished project looking nicely aged and worn. Would you believe its pieces were on the shelves at Dollar Tree just last week? And then here it is compared to the originals, and I'm thinking we can pretty much just add it in with the others. What do you think? Good dupe or no? And like I mentioned earlier, these rustic pieces, although beautiful year round, are especially perfect for fall. And don't forget part one of this episode featuring the Turkish olive jar DIY will be linked in the description. And you can also find it here in the Dollar Dupe series playlist, along with other fabulous dupes from Pottery Barn, Restoration Hardware, Anthropology, and others. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.